Hey, baby, you like fast cars and holes in your neck? I'm Dracula. Hi, guys. Today, miking a tom. I've got three of them, but we're just gonna mic one of them. These are already tuned because we just had a band in, and they sound great. God, listen to that ring. I am cool with Tom's ringing because I usually fix that in the mix as opposed to here. I want to have the option of having them ring. So I don't use dampeners of any kind. I don't use the rings, I don't use the gels, I don't use gummies. Let the freedom, Tom. Ring. Let's mic a Tom, shall we? Probably that one. This one has a look to it. Let's do that one. And magically, now we're mic'd. Darndest thing. So listen, I'm doing three different types of microphones for this video. Why? Because I can, and to show you the difference in them. So right now I'm using Audix D4s. Very reasonably priced, specifically made for this application. Here's what they sound like. So, I have a mic on the bottom, in the center, aimed directly at the middle, because nobody's gonna hit it. <laughs> it happens all the time. Well, I'll show you a 421 in a minute. You'll be appalled, you'll be appalled by this 421 I'm gonna show you. It's been hit more times than there's a terrible joke there. Not going. So anyway, I'm gonna show you three different mics because they all have a different way of approaching this particular problem. The Tom problem. The problem. One on top, aimed towards the center, well out of the drummer's way. One on bottom, right in the darn middle. Both of them about two to three inches off of the head. YMMV, your mileage might vary based upon how hard your drummer wants to hit stuff. The song is the heart, and what the song wants, the song wants. Yeah. This is the sound of the Audix. Mmm, nice long sustain. Sounds really good. So let's talk about the stands just for two seconds. Be there's a reason. There's a reason. So I'm using short stand on the bottom, and then I'm using a horizontally short stand on the top. And I'm staying well out of the drummer's way. Like, he can go for the other two toms, and he's not going to hit any of this situation here unless he's got real issues that day, which he might. Maybe he just doesn't like me. I mean, who could blame him? This, probably not going to get hit. That under there, definitely not gonna get hit. So it's a balance between best placement, safest placement. Because getting hit, well, it happens. C'est la vie. Doesn't sound good. Probably won't kill it the first time. It'll kill it eventually. So that's the Audix D4. Let's move on to the next Tom mic, shall we? Dracula. And welcome back. Now we have 421s, Sennheisers. This is an extremely traditional time microphone, although recently I feel like there's been a lot of weird audio nerd controversy, contra con controversy. I don't know. If it sounds good to you, it sounds good. If it sounds good in the mix, it sounds good. Ignore the nerds, okay? Okay? Just throw the damn mic on. Good? No good? Easy. Okay? Let's have a listen to the 421. And that's what a 421 sounds like. Same thing, pretty much the exact same placement. I should say that I am aiming towards a pattern. So I'm gonna take a picture and then put it there with magic. If you look at the top of any drum that somebody's been playing for more than like a week, you will see that there's a very clear pattern on the drum of hits. So what I'm gonna do is take a picture of that sort of thing so that you can see I'm aiming towards where the pattern is the thickest. We already know they play there because we can see the wear. It's like following a drummer's tracks, which I don't recommend at all, ever. Hey, uh. Hey, what do you call a drummer in a three piece suit? The defendant. Hey, hey. what's the difference between a drummer and a large pizza? Love. The pizza can't love you like the drummer will. Something about a family of four. All right, so yes. 
the 421. What do you think? And now our final option, the most expensive option. And we've gone from dynamic microphones on the Audix and the Sennheiser to condenser microphones. Ooh, so this is a 414. AKG 414s are the workhorses. It just feels generic and cliche to say that. They're just, you can use them for pretty much anything. Like they're fine with the SPL. I do have these padded, the first pad, minus 10 dB. But other than the pad, the levels on the Great River are exactly the same as they were for the 421 and for the D4. This is what the AKG 414 top and bottom sound like. Or something. 414, fantastic microphone. You can use them for vocals, you can use them for marimbas, you can use them for pianos, you can use them for toms, they're just great. So there we have three different mics, three different sounds, pretty much the same placement, close, but staying out of the drummer's way. I hope this has been instructive, and I hope that you now have some idea of what you would like to use on toms when you eventually get to toms. Once again, not rocking, it's not rocking. Not rocket surgery. This is the last of the single simple drum miking series. From here on out, we're actually gonna do the whole kit so that we can start to show things like overhead placement and, once again, how to properly mic all these things when they're all being mic'd together. It doesn't change what you're trying to get from the instrument. It does change sometimes where you're gonna have to put stands and stuff like that. You just have to get clever and sneaky with it. But I have faith that you are clever and sneaky. Hope you liked it. In a while, crocodile.